You got him, Murph? I got him. Ooh. Now, the Ooh. good part about this, Mark, Ooh. is that if he is 28 inches with a pinched tail, oh, that means he potentially could be going... Sportsman's Adventures, we travel to one of our very favorite fishing holes, the watery wilderness of the Florida Everglades. The Everglades National Park spans hundreds of miles over the very southern tip of the Sunshine State, and that's where our adventure begins. Captain Rick Murphy and his special guest, Mark Fisher, skim over the shallow waters of Florida Bay. They've been lured here by the huge schools of tarpon and snook that also call these waters home. The early morning sun had barely risen when the first fish was spotted. As the tide moves in, so do the fish. It didn't take much more than a good cast to get the day started. There you go, fish. Don't forget to bow to him. All right. All right. You know, bad... I didn't have much time to bow to the little buddy, buddy. It was bad buddy. guiding. It was bad right guiding. Up. Cool. Right at the boat. Now, let me ask you something. I noticed that you were twitching that, different twitching. Is that, it's, this, it's a sub walk. It's a so sub tell walk, me. right, but I'm, I'm allowing it to glide a little bit instead of fishing it like an expert. Gotcha. I forgot, these things are still charged. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this ain't no bike, man. <laughs> I like this. You like that? I always do, Murph, you know. But it amazed me was, so you're saying by pausing between the twitches on the subwalk, Let, right. it allows just, the lure to glide. He ate it, it on the pause. Right, because the cool thing about it is the bait is always in play. You know how you've always talked about making the bait do what you want it to do? Right. Even though you pause, the bait is still in play in, the, in, in some form of a cadence. And that's a fascinating thing. Now let me ask you this. Would you, this outfit, we're talking about a Shimano Calais yep. with a, a little six and a half foot plug rod. Which is perfect. You know, the little suffix braided loaded. line with yep. a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. Now, what would you use this setup for up there in the north, the you know, northwest? You know, actually, Murph, you just take Big and west. cut the line off and do the same dang thing. And you'd or you tie straight to the braid. Tie, tie straight to the braid, or you can use a leader. There's no wrong or right, but the way that there's no need for us to use the heavy leaders unless we were pipe washing. Oh, I got gotcha. you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so basically, this combination, this setup, this equipment is identical to what we would use in the north for pike and smallmouth. Walleye, you're going to change things up just a little bit, Murph. All right, now let me tell you what we're doing. Yeah, you're, you see, you I doing? pulled the little kid out. We're going to. Um, get a dna sample of this fish mark cool all right so if you'll take this sponge and rub it right here on his cheek for me to get a scraping of his slime and then i will take care of that in a second put it right on his face. right here or right here on his cheek and just use that little scotch bright pad scrub it real good oh really yeah we still got him a little bit. he didn't like it he didn't like that no so right here that's it See if you got some slime on That's yeah, perfect. That's okay, it. let me get this subwalk out of his face. You got pliers, I know you do. Yeah. Beautiful oh, fish, man. Yeah. Just a beautiful fish. And the size is cool. Now, this size subwalk you would use for what fish up there in the. In oh, the we'd, we'd still use it on smallmouth and pike. You know, relativity of size is all dependent on, you know, as you know, seasonal progressions and bait. Well, or just sometimes location. Mm -hmm. You know, here, it's it's like, you know, when you're fishing, you're, how many times you get asked, how deep are we? Right. When we, you and I, it's a different deal. We know the plugs and, and the lures and how deep they'll run. Right. Well, that thing hooked up well. Yeah, it did. And, and so basically, 
the the seven subwalk seven subwalk runs about three four feet of water it runs about three four feet of water on the retrieve but the interesting part about it as you know you have salt water here so it's going to be a little more buoyant there you go and there's not a problem with it you know so you're going to be able to fish it rod tip up a little shallower as you know now this time of year in september we mm -hmm. got these finger mullet that are in the system and if that doesn't look like a finger mullet in everglades national park you can't build anything no more well that's the thing like but that. that's a part of our development too Murph. how many years did you tell us we need some of these olive backs we need some blue backs we need some gold and you know i mean we listen to what you're telling us and here we are. I mean, that was a proof in it. I'll be honest with you, I would not normally tell you this, but I was doing it strictly for selfish reasons. <laughs> He's being honest, folks. He is 28 inches with a pinched tail. Oh, that means he potentially could be going in the pot. How would you like to hook a giant tarpaulin? Well, come along then, you fishermen. Let's journey down to Tampico, Mexico, where all the record tarpon have been taken. Let's follow this couple as they leave the club and go after the mighty Silver King. Here's the first strike. Looks like a big one. Now the young lady is getting some advice from her boyfriend. <laughs> a little backseat driving, but she says, I'll handle this, you just watch me. Hold on to that rod and reel, young lady. Yes, but hooking a tarpon is one thing, landing him in the boat is quite another. You know that a girl versus fish might go on for another hour or more. Sabalo is the Mexican word for tarpon, but in any fisherman's language, he's the fightingest fish that ever got on the end of a line. Buena suerte y hasta la vuelta. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Rapala, Lures, Maverick Boats, Minn Kota, Humminbird, La Jolla Resort, Power Pole, Swift, Silent, Secure. Why is Yamaha your best investment? Just ask Captain Buddy LaPointe. In the charter business, I can't afford downtime. My Yamaha 150 four-stroke is the most dependable, trouble-free outboard I've ever run. This clean-burning, quiet, fuel-efficient Yamaha four-stroke is the most versatile outboard in the Yamaha lineup. So invest in the best, clean, quiet, dependable Yamaha F-150. Yamaha, because your best investment starts right here. If fish were this easy to find, you wouldn't need Humminbird side imaging. Amazing picture-like images and a 480-foot side-to-side beam eliminate unproductive water fast, so you'll be at their front door in no time. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. I've been fishing all my life and seen some pretty cool things on the water. I've seen a 180-pound tarpon jump in my boat. I've seen giant snook slam live bait, and I've also seen super shallow redfish I can easily pull to. I've seen a lot, and a lot has changed except my boat builder, Maverick Boat Company. Make no mistake about it, Maverick makes the best technical pulling skiffs, high-speed backcountry skiffs, and bay boats in the world. Hughes, Maverick Pathfinder, number one for a reason. Has your Florida fishing or hunting license expired and you need it renewed now? No problem. The FWC has several services that will allow you to buy your license instantly. No matter where you are, in the woods or on the water, all you need is a major credit card. For a small additional service fee, you can purchase these licenses directly online or simply by calling a toll-free number. 
To get your instant license online, log on to myfe.com or call toll free 1 888 Fish Florida or 1 888 Hunt Florida. Our special guest for today's adventure is Mark Fisher from Rapala Lures. Mark is the Director of Field Promotions and Product Development for Rapala. What that really means is that Mark gets to travel the world fishing with top anglers and top guides and getting their input on what really works and what doesn't. Fresh water, salt water, Mark does it all. In fact, Mark is fishing here with Rick, testing Rapala lures to work on the shallow saltwater flats. And then, he'll use these same lures to target bass, pike, and muskie in the northern freshwater lakes. You Big got him, snook. buddy. What is it? Big snook. Is it? Yes. Are I, you sure? I saw he lying on his face. <laughs> this is one of those Florida striped whistlers, ain't it? This is it. Oh, you got him, Murph? I got him. Ooh. Now, the Ooh. good part about this, Mark, Ooh. is that if he is 28 inches with a pinched tail, oh, that means he potentially could be going in the pot. Uh-oh. He knows it, too, Murph. He's feeling every, every little bit of the frying pan at this point. Yes, sir. He's feeling... He is feeling it. Can I help you, bud? Uh... Oh, came off. Perfect. Doo -doo. Almost perfect. Doo -doo. I would have liked to measure it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're in here, Murph. <clears throat> they are in here. Now, well, Mark, these that... fish don't give up, do they? No. And let me ask you, does it, what kind of freshwater species does this look remind you of? Is it more like a largemouth or a smallie? I never you call know, this a smallmouth be... bad. I would say this would be closer to smallmouth. Is that right? You know, just because of the leaping ability. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Now, do you guys, can you pick up a, uh, a bass like this? Yeah, and belly lift them. But will he stay like that? Yeah, you can actually hold them and they'll vert, sit upright, belly up, or belly move. and won't move. This one won't move. His he's whole stuck. weight, he's stuck. It's called the Vulcan Snuckle. Vulcan Snuckle. And that's flip. <laughs> Flip, I saw Flip do that That's pretty a cool. million years ago. And uh, we always used to joke about that. So You know what I call that? What do you call he's that? He's playing the harmonica. That means he likes that bass. <laughs> See, he's playing the harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, that stew app color in this tannic water really stands out. It's something that you not only know that they feel the vibration, but there's mm -hmm. something that they can see. Wow. I hooked him twice. There we go. Beautiful fish. Man, they <clears throat> bite though. Yeah. You know, you don't have much of a water column here for these fish to work in, either. No, it's all about being up in the air, you know? Look at them go. Will he know he's being re he's released? Oh yeah. And to wait till the water gets in his gills and he's gone. Right. We grab him by the thumb, and he'll hold on to the thumb like that until he's ready to go, and then he lets go. Does he? You can just go. I mean, a twenty pounder. You can. He'll be sucking on your thumb like this, and then yeah. when he's ready to go. He just lets go of your thumb. It's got a personality. What you got there, little buddy? It's a small snook. <laughs> that chartreuse. Nice. This really is the color. You got to use bright colors in this tannic colored water. No, at least I think that's what works best. No, that's smart. You could use something that's chrome. The chrome, what that chrome does is it obviously, you know, it flashes and reflects the light. Mm -hmm. Look at all the fish blowing up here where yeah, I just staked that hole. Like crazy. Wow tie off here. Uh, this is kind of interesting how you can tie yourself off and work an area pretty effectively without stirring up the bottom. Yeah, and the reason why I'm tying off is not because this fish is not manageable or anything like that. I'm tying off because I don't want to drift through the area while I right. get the hooks out of this fish, not managing the boat. 
That's the whole key is stop forward progress so that I don't spook any fish that might be down there 25 or 30 yards, you know? Right. Nice. That's chartreuse, huh, Mark? It That's really nice shows fish, up in this tannic water. That's just and, it. You know, you're not really matching up with the, with the forage base as much as giving them a target they can see in the stained water. Exactly. And you know, it, the neat part is, here we are in the fall. This is the month of September. Mm -hmm. A lot of finger mullets f swimming around. But the neat part is that this fish, it doesn't matter whether you're here in Everglades National Park or even off of Stewart, but specifically over on the West Coast, that Port Charlotte and Inglewood area, they get the afternoon thunderstorms just like we get here. And sure. And with that being said, the water gets stained and tannic just like it is here. Look at Constantly how... Constantly getting new water coming into the system. Yeah. yeah. Look how alive he is with that, his dorsal fin sticking yeah. up. His fins yellow and uh, gold from the tannic water. Just so neat. I love, I never get bored of, of catching the smoke, whether it's a little one or a big one. All right, I'm gonna let you ready. Cool, man. Oh, I don't think he's gonna be quite long enough. Just like normal. It's a beautiful fish. He's a shorty. This Conservation Minute is brought to you by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Do you dream of a career that would keep you on the water or in the woods every day? The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is looking for qualified men and women to join the nation's largest conservation law enforcement agency. As an FWC officer, you'll patrol Florida's coastal waters, rivers, and lakes, as well as our state's beautiful wooded areas. Assistance to boaters, anglers, and hunters while enforcing state fishing, boating, and hunting laws. This special area of law enforcement is both challenging and demanding. Officer candidates undergo specialized classroom and field training to prepare for this unique career. Upon graduation, you'll join an elite law enforcement community. Now's the time to make your dream career a reality. For more information on becoming an FWC wildlife officer, contact the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, 1-866-FWC-HIRE, or visit myfwc.com. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and when I'm in the Florida Keys, I stay at the La Jolla Resort in Isla Mar a place for families and fishermen. The La Jolla is located on the bay at mile marker 82.2 and has easy access to the Everglades. The flats of Isla Mirada and the offshore reefs are just minutes away. The La Jolla Resort has great dockage, boat ramps, barbecue pits, and swimming pools. So whether your group is small or large, the La Jolla can take care of all your needs. Why is Yamaha your best investment? Just ask charter boat captain and tournament angler George Mitchell. No matter where I fish, I know I've got the most reliable outboard there is. For 25 years, Yamaha's innovative technology has produced the best outboards in the water. Tournament after tournament, win after win. The Yamaha F350. Power, reliability, and fuel efficiency. Yamaha. Because your best investment starts right here. Think GPS is just for getting you to the water? Think again. The new iPilot wireless GPS trolling system can hold your boat in place like an electronic anchor. Record and retrace productive fishing paths, automatically keep you on any bearing you choose, and take total command of speed and iPilot controls your boat with wireless GPS precision so you can focus on fishing. And it's only from Minn Kota. At Contender, 
We've specialized in building high-performance, top-quality, custom-made boats for more than 25 years. Contender has redefined what a fishing boat can be, and we are committed to producing the finest fishing boats in the world. And there has never been a better time to get a great deal on our entire line of boats. Be sure to check out our new generation team models, the 27, 31, and 33, all available with optional forward seating. We're looking forward to welcoming you into the Contender family of boats. Don't forget the bow, fish. Okay, you got to point the rod. Take, fully extend your hand all the way out. Give that fish as much slack as you can give. We got it going, bud. Put, hold your rod down for one second. I'll get out of your way here. No problem, buddy. Okay. Don't forget the bow. Now it's really the most important part. Of it. Otherwise, he jumps and comes off. Come you, buddy. Okay. He's nice. in our face. Oh, you didn't bow. He's in the over here and he's I got the rod right there, right there little buddy. This is what didn't I do? This I got a six foot rod and the fish is six and a half inches from the boat. Hey, if that's six inches I'm there. <laughs> oh, it's a big snook mark. Oh, he right, was buddy. following the tarpon I threw to. Oh no. What can I help you with, bud? There's nothing to do. Look at him, he's pulling the boat around. He is. He's so big, he's pulling my boat around. Oh, he's a nice one, Murph. Oh. Real nice fish, buddy. Nice. Ooh. I'll let you take this. Huh? Push pump. All right. You got, you got it? it, bud. Here, stick it right there. You got it. You just stick it right there. There you go, perfect. Oh, I don't think he's gonna be quite long enough. Just like normal. It's a beautiful fish. He's a shorty. Man. Boy, did you hear him explode on that, though? <laughs> Nice. They don't last very long in this hot water. You know, September, you get them in and 10.30. And, you know, we had a little bit of a cool breeze this morning, but boy, I tell you what, you turn the sunshine on and it changes the face of the place quickly. Well, this is good, Mark, because if- Beauty, Mark. Now, Mark, let me ask you, you know, here in Florida, we've got state regulations that allow us to take these fish during certain times of the year. Oh, and we also have a size restriction. Now, here in Monroe County, okay. they have to be 28 inches with a pinch tail. And the time of year we can take them is September and October and November through uh, December 15th. Okay. So we have to let the fish go if it's during that time of the year. So let's see what this fish measures. All right, I think he's going to be a little bit short. Being pinching the tail, he has to be 28 inches. And this fish you got her, bud. is 29 inches. 29. You know, that's a valuable point too, Murph, because in Minnesota and other states, it really depends on the state. Is to whether you fan with the tail open or you pinch the tail. Definitely it's pinched. The, it's the difference in, in states and, and making sure that things are correct with your... Now here's state. what people don't know, and they need to listen to this very carefully. If this fish literally right on the line, mm -hmm. I would put him back, right. even though he measures in the boat. Because what happens is when you take and put that fish in that cold ice and he's alive, you're going to put him in the ice cooler, mm -hmm. he shrinks up and guess right. what ends up happening? He, he becomes the short, then the game commission guy measures him, he, you're possessing a short snook. So you got to make sure he's well over 20, 
eight inches if you're going to take them. And this one, I'm going to introduce you to your first bite of snook. Nice, Murph. I'll take that, buddy. Nice job. Beautiful fish, too. Yeah, with a beautiful bronze. And, you know, that's the one thing around here at Sportsman's Adventures. We yeah. eat them. Oh, yeah. We take what we want to eat, and then we but let that, the rest go. But that fish is a testimonial to what selective harvest, slot limits, and uh, fish conservation is all about. Yeah. Now, look at that mouth. How does that mouth compare? Being that we're going to eat this fish, I'm not so mm -hmm. worried about holding them out of the water. Does that mouth look a lot like some of those large mouth you guys catch, right? Absolutely. You know, which are much like the Florida strain large here. But the smallies, you know, classically a smaller mouth. You'll see. It, it's, a, it's a riot. But Absolutely. a lot of what you're doing right now and how you're holding them and some of the characteristics, you know, belly holding the fish and they just kind of go docile. Same thing, applications with smallmouth bass and same and plugs, to that. same tackle. Wallies as well. You can spin them around just like you're sitting on a pinwheel. Cool. All right, let me stick them in the cooler. There's something very special about being here in the Everglades. The sights and the sounds here are like nowhere else. For Rick, Everglades National Park is a cool place, comfortable and familiar. And sharing this experience with a good friend like Mark Fisher has made this another great sportsman's adventure. Check out the Sportsman's Adventures website at www.sportsmansadventures.com. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. Just let him get in. Bill, reel to the boat and you'll feel it hit the boat, Bill. Sportsman's Adventures was brought to you by Contender Boats, Costa Del Mar, see what's out there, Trigger X, Suffix Lines, Loop Reels, Ameritrail, custom trailer manufacturers, and by Screen Print Plus, when image matters.